Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to determine the chloride content in water sample by argentometric method. So in this experiment, the aim of the experiment is to determine the amount of chloride ion present in the 100 ml of water sample. And you are provided with the standard solution of sodium chloride and silver nitrate acyl ink solution. So by titrating these two solutions, uh, you are going to determine the strength of chloride ion in the unknown water sample. So you are provided with a standard uh, solution. So they are, uh, so they will give the uh, strength of this sodium chloride solution. Then only you can able to determine the strength of silver nitrate by using this uh, strength of standard uh, NaCl solution. So the principle of this experiment is water contains chlorides in the form of sodium chloride, potassium chloride, calcium chloride and magnesium chloride. The rainwater is considered as a purest form of water, it does not having any dissolved salts in it. But the rainwater when penetrates into the soil, it gets dissolved through the minerals present in the soil. So the groundwater will be rich in salt content. So by this process, the sodium chloride, calcium chloride and magnesium chloride are get dissolved in the water. So the desirable limit of chloride content in drinking water is 250 ppm. If it exceeds the limit, it will not desirable for drinking purpose. So the amount of chloride ion in water can be determined using argentometric method, which states that metric is a measurement. We are going to measure the chloride content by using silver nitrate. So it is called as argento. By using silver nitrate solution, we are going to measure the chloride content. So it is called as argentometric method. And it is also otherwise called as Morse method. Why we are uh, calling it as Morse method means the German uh, chemist uh, who is uh, named as Carl Friedrich Mohr, he invented a direct titration method. In that method, silver nitrate is used as titrant and chloride solution is used as analyte. Potassium chromate is used as indicator. So by this method, he determined the end point when all chloride ions are consumed by silver ion reddish brown colored precipitate is formed by the reaction of silver ion with the chromate ion. So this procedure we are going to follow. So this method is called as Morse method. So we are going to see the reactions happened while we add the silver nitrate from burette to conical flask. We are going to take the chloride ion solution in conical flask. See in this conical flask, we are taken the water sample. In that water sample, chloride ions are present. We are going to take the silver nitrate in burette. So we are going to add this silver nitrate into the chloride solution. Before that, we need to add the indicator potassium chromate in it. So we represented the chromate ion here. Okay. If you add drop by drop of silver nitrate solution, the silver ions from the silver nitrate are going to be added in the water sample. So the chloride ion and the silver forms the silver chloride. So how many ions present in this water converted all these all ions are converted into silver chloride. So if once all the chloride ions are converted into silver chloride, there is no chlorine to get reacted with the silver. So the further addition of uh, silver nitrate going to be complexed with the chromate ion which is the indicator chromate ion which forms silver nitrate. While well, start of the reaction, if we add indicator into the conical flask, it will become yellow in color. And if we add drop by drop of silver nitrate, it will become a milky white color which represents the formation of silver chloride. So the milky white color represents the formation of silver chloride. Once if all the chloride ion is uh, uh, converted into silver chloride, further addition of silver nitrate going to be react with the potassium chromate. So the silver and the chromate ion going to be complexed with the formation of silver chromate which is reddish brown color. Now the solution is turned into milky white to reddish brown which is the end point of this reaction which states that there is no chloride ion further to form silver chloride with the silver nitrate ions, silver ions okay, which represents the end point of the reaction. So this is the principle behind the volumetric titration of this experiment.
Hello everyone. Today we are going to see the demonstration of chemistry laboratory experiment named determination of chloride content in water by argentometric method. It is also called as Morse method. This experiment having two titration. The titration one states the standardization of silver nitrate solution. Uh, we are going to find out the strength of silver nitrate by titrating it against standard NaCl solution. The, and the titration two states the uh, estimation of chloride ions in water sample. On the titration, we are going to uh, find out the strength of a given water sample by titrating it against standard silver nitrate solution. So by this we can able to identify the amount of chloride ion present in the given water sample. Here I am explaining the working procedure. First we need to fill 50 ml of burette solution which is the silver nitrate solution to the burette. Before filling the burette must be washed with water and rinsed with small amount of silver nitrate. Then only we have to fill 50 ml of silver nitrate solution. Wash one. Once it washed with the water, we have to rinse the burette with a small amount of silver nitrate solution. Then only the entire burette will have only the silver nitrate solution, otherwise there will be the presence of water molecules inside the burette. Okay. So add small amount of silver nitrate solution to rinse. It's enough. You have to rinse the solution to the entire burette surface inside the burette. Now the burette is filled with the silver nitrate solution. Up to the mark of zero we have to fill. Now the solution is filled up to zero mark. Place the burette in the burette stand as your convenience. Next we need to pipette out 20 ml of prepared standard NaCl solution to a clean conical flask. Before pipetting out we need to wash the pipette and we have to rinse with a small amount of NaCl solution. Please wash the pipette. So we are rinsing the pipette with the water and then we need to rinse it with small amount of NaCl solution. Now we are rinsing with small amount of NaCl solution. Once it rinsed entirely we can pipette out 20 ml of NaCl solution into a clean conical flask. We need to measure carefully up to the mark we have to pip it out to a clean conical flask. Now to this conical flask Add few drops of potassium chromate indicator carefully.
now the color of the solution in the conical flask becomes yellow the yellow color represents the color of potassium chromate indicator we need to titrate the yellow colored standard na solution against silver nitrate solution taken in the burette add drop by drop of burette solution carefully to the conical flask your concentration needed in conical flask to absorb the color change now we are going to start the titration so shake the conical flask gently while the addition of burette solution uh, the color will be started to change in the conical flask by identifying the exact color change from yellow to reddish brown we can able to identify the exact end point of this titration once you attained the exact color change close the burette solution now the color will become uh, whitish which represents the silver ions present in the burette solution started to react with the chloride ions present in the conical flask which forms silver chloride and it will becomes white precipitate once the entire formation is end then the addition of each drop of silver nitrate from the burette going to add with the potassium chromate indicator it directly go to react with potassium chromate which forms silver chromate the color of the formation of silver chromate is reddish brown so that we can able to identify the entire chloride ion present in the conical flask is reacted with the silver nitrate solution see the intense color is appear in the center of the conical flask which states that we are closer to the end point once the yellow color changed into reddish brown we have to stop the close the burette now the color get changed so we have to close the burette which states that the reaction is entirely completed this reddish brown color states that the entire chloride ion is reacted with the silver ion present in the burette solution now take the burette from the stand and note the reading of silver nitrate consumed from this set point we can calculate the synth of silver nitrate solution taken in the burette so the standardization of silver nitrate is completed by the end point what we obtained in this titration we can able to calculate the strength of the given silver nitrate link solution okay next we are proceed our second titration now i am going to start the second titration titled determination of chloride ions from this titration we can able to identify the strength of unknown water sample here we are going to see the working procedure of titration 2 for this also we need the three reagents one is burette solution second one is pipette solution and third one is indicator we need to fill 50 ml of standard silver nitrate solution into the burette now the silver nitrate becomes standard silver nitrate solution because we determined the strength of silver nitrate from first titration so that we called it as standard silver nitrate solution for the titration 2 we already rinsed the burette with the silver nitrate solution so we need uh, we need not to uh, wash again and rinse again we can refill the burette simply by adding silver nitrate solution so the 50 ml is measured in the burette fix the burette to the burette stand very carefully so we are handling with the glass vessels so we need to handle very carefully and second we are going to pipette out 20 ml of water sample to the conical flask 
Before that, we need to wash the pipette and rinse it with a given water sample. So we are rinsing now the uh, pipette with the given water sample, unknown water sample. Once it rinsed, we have to measure 20 ml of water sample into the clean conical flask. So exactly measure the solution up to the mark given in the pipette. So pipette out the 20 ml into a clean conical flask. To this solution we need to add few drops of potassium chromate indicator which gives yellow color to the pipette solution. So we need to start the titration. Before that we need to do the careful titration because from this endpoint only we are going to calculate the amount of chloride ion present in the given unknown water sample. So we need to give our fullest attention during the titration and we have to identify the exact endpoint. So we will start the second titration. The endpoint may arise within the short range or within the longer range. So we have to be very careful while titrating. So now the solution becomes whitish and we can able to see the reddish brown area in center of the conical flask which states that we are closer to the end point. Now the color become changed we attained the reddish brown color. Now we have to stop the burette solution. It states that the unknown water sample having chloride ions entirely reacted with the silver nitrate. Uh, the silver uh, reacted with the chloride ions which form silver chloride which is white in color. So the reddish brown states with the absence of the chloride ions the silver uh, nitrate reacted with the potassium chromate forms silver chromate. So the color of the silver comet is reddish brown and we have to measure the end point by taking the burette. From this end point only we are going to calculate the amount of chloride ion present in the given unknown water sample. Through the calculation procedure with this end point we can able to identify the amount of chloride ions in milligrams per liter or grams per liter. We will see the calculation part separately. Now we are going to see the titration 1, standardization of silver nitrate calculation part. We are taking the standard NaCl solution in conical flask and we are taking silver nitrate solution in burette. So we are going to titrate the solution. This is the tabular column for the volumetric calculation. We have to take the volume of pipette solution here, standard NaCl. So we measured the 20 ml of a standard NaCl to the conical flask and then we add potassium chromate to that. And we measured the 50 ml of a silver nitrate in burette solution. Initially, the mark is on 0. So we are given 0 and we attend the end point. We can take the end point as 19.5. This is the end point means we have to write the same for volume of silver nitrate 19.5 and if we get two similar values we can take it as concordant value in volumetric titration. So 19.5 is the concordant value of this titration. So this is the calculation part. We have to give the volume of NaCl and we have to give the strength of NaCl and then volume of silver nitrate, strength of silver nitrate. So by substituting this value we can able to calculate the strength of silver nitrate from titration 1. So it is called the standardization of silver nitrate. We are going to determine the strength of silver nitrate. So you can uh, tell me that we are taking the standard NaCl 20 ml. So we given the 20 ml in first row and the second strength of NaCl they have given 0 0.01 normality NaCl solution. So you are provided with the standard NaCl solution. The strength of 
NaCl is 0.01 normality. And the volume of silver nitrate we obtained from the burette is 19.5. You have to substitute 19.5 here. So according to the law of volumetric uh, principle, we need to use the formula V1 N1 is equal to V2 N2. Here we are going to calculate the N2. So we taken these out and we can write the formula as V1 N1 divided by V2. So V1 is 20 into N1 is 0 0.01 divided by V2 is 19.5. By calculating this, we can able to identify the strength of silver nitrate solution. So 20 into 0 0.01 equal to divided by 19.5. I get the value of 0 0.0102 normality and I have determined the strength of silver nitrate from the end point of burette 19.5. So the strength of the silver nitrate is 0 0.0102. So hereafter if you are using the silver nitrate in the same uh, experiment means you have to uh, express it as standard silver nitrate. Why? Because it is now the strength is determined. So we are going to call, uh, call it as standard silver nitrate solution. So the strength of the silver nitrate is determined from titration one by using this calculation part. Okay. Now we are going to see the titration two calculation part, determination of fluoride in water. So we are taking the standard silver nitrate solution in burette and we are going to titrating it with water sample. And here we are using the indicator potassium chromate, first uh, titration one also the same indicator is used. So the volume of water sample we have measured is 20 ml into the conical flask. The prepared solution has to be written first. And then the burette reading we are taking standard silver nitrate. So initially the mark was 0 in burette. And if you, we get the end point for titration 2 is 9.5, you can take it as 9.5. The same for concordant value. If you get the two similar value, you can take it as concordant value. So 9.5 is our end point. We have to substitute. So the volume of silver nitrate is here. We have mentioned 9.5. You have to write the two. 9.5 ml. And the strength of silver nitrate we calculated in titration 1. We have to substitute here 0 0.0102 normal solution. And the volume of water sample is 20. We are going to calculate the strength of water sample. And you need to calculate the same as like titration 1, 9.15 into 0 0.0102 divided by 20. So by this you can able to calculate the strength of water sample, 9.5 into 0 0.0102 divided by 20. I am getting the value of 0 0.0048 normality. So from titration 2, we determine the strength of water sample. From this strength, we are going to calculate how much of fluoride ion present in the water sample by using another calculation part. So in this titration 2, we determine the strength of water sample. Here we are going to see the amount of fluoride ion present in 1 litre of water sample. So we determined the strength in titration 2. We are going to substitute this value here 0 0.004 H. Okay. That is the value of the domain 0 0.004 H. You have to multiply the strength into equivalent rate of fluoride ion. The equivalent rate of fluoride ion is 35.46. We are going to uh, calculate for uh, 1000 ml, so we have to multiply it with 1000. So finally we get the answer in terms of parts per million. So 0 0.0048 into 35.46 into 1000. We get 170 ppm. It states that 170 parts of uh, chloride ion present in parts per million of water molecules. So we have calculated the amount of fluoride ion for 1 liter. Similarly, we have to calculate the fluoride ion for 100 ml. We, can go, we are going to divide it by 10. So we are going to measure for 100 ml. From 1000, we have to divide by 10. We can get 170. Final answer is 17 ppm. For 100 ml of water sample, there will be the 17 parts of fluoride ion percent per million amount of water molecules.
So by this you have calculated the amount of chloride and for two ranges, one for one liter and another one for hundred ml. You have to write the answer in to the result. Okay. So the result is the amount of chloride ion present in the whole of the given water sample means for one liter. You have to write 170 ppm. And the amount of chloride in person for 100 ml is 17 ppm. So from this you can able to determine that it was not exceed the desirable limit of water that is 250 milligrams per liter. It was only 170. So you can state that this water is desirable for drinking purpose. But we need treatment. It was a little bit higher value. So you need to treat the water before taking it for drinking purpose. So by this way you are calculating the amount of chloride ion present in the 100 ml of given water sample using argentometric method. Thank you so much.